America is facing an ever-growing epidemic of diabetes. Over 26 million people are suffering with the disease known as the silent killer. Hi, my name is Christy Butler and I'm here in the Maryland State Capitol at the Governor's Mansion for the annual Buy Local Cookout, an event sponsored by the Maryland Department of Agriculture where they're encouraging Marylanders to incorporate at least one locally grown, produced or harvested product in their meals each day. Well, Governor O'Malley has hosted this Buy Local Cookout every year since he's been in Agres, and it's to celebrate Maryland's great agricultural production that we have here in the state. And tonight, this cookout is to kick off a week of campaign so that every Maryland citizen would incorporate some Maryland produce into their meal at least one day for a week. This is our Buy Local night here at Government House. So at the Governor's Residence, we have people who have come from all over our state that are involved in this movement of local food, grown locally in Maryland, raised locally in Maryland, and consumed locally here in Maryland. So it's all about more sustainable living, more profitable family farms, and a better quality of life for everybody. So it's a terrific night and best weather we've ever had. So we're from Zephyr and Gold Catering, and uh, my name is Daniel, and we have a cucumber watermelon salad with a maple thyme vinaigrette. Uh, virtually all the ingredients are local uh, from Maryland. We have uh, yellow watermelon, red watermelon, cucumber, and thyme. Uh, and we also have, uh, for the vinaigrette, was made with local maple syrup, local apple cider vinegar, and local honey. Uh, so it's a delicious uh, treat, and uh, you have the sweetness of the watermelon, and then you have a little bit of savory of the thyme and uh, apple cider vinegar sort of takes it another place. So all together as a combination, super refreshing, little creative and simple. I think any Maryland family could make this at home. Uh, shop down at, the, uh, at your local uh, farmer's market and you should be able to pick up all these products. And this is such a simple dish, you can find it in a cookbook um, and I would hope that you enjoy. Well, when you buy your produce local, it's picked fresher, it's riper when it's harvested, so it tastes better. So you'll make better healthy choices. You'll pick fruits and vegetables that taste better and maybe make better choices than some of the other options that you might have. So we encourage all Marylanders, especially those with medical issues, to always buy local whenever you can so it encourages a healthier diet. But my head whistle blow you know that I'm coming home and that fog horn whistle blow I want to hear it I don't have to fear it cause I I, I want to rock your gypsy soul Part of this is about uh, creating local economies, especially when it comes to the food that we consume, but a big part of it's also about the health. I mean, what we put into our bodies. So a tomato that's raised here in Maryland has far greater uh, nutritional value than a tomato that had to drive across the country. So, uh, look, this is a, a great way not only to build up our own economy and family farms, but also, also to build up your own body. And that's particularly true for people that really need to watch their diet carefully. So, buy locally grown Maryland produce, nothing like it. For those who are interested in maybe visiting some of the local farms so that they can start participating in more local purchases to increase the healthier diet, where could they go to get that information? Well, the Maryland Department of Agriculture hosts a website, marylandsbest.net. 
if you go to that website, it'll give you a, a listing of farmers markets and farmers where you can go to get good local produce. That's marylandsbest.net. America is a nation filled with rich cultural traditions from around the globe, especially when it comes to food. Hi, I'm registered dietitian Vandana Shet with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Healthy, tasty menu items from all ethnicities can be included into a healthful eating plan that's specific to your needs and tastes. Stir-fried dishes from China filled with vegetables and chicken minestrone from Italy with tomatoes, beans, and whole grain pasta, Greek dolmas with lean ground meat, eggplant, and rice, broiled tilapia and gazpacho from Mexico, and lentils or dal with roti from India. These are just a few of the wonderful and good for you foods that have been brought to this country from around the world. And there are so many more. A registered dietitian can help you understand how your favorite ethnic foods can fit into a healthful eating plan. For more information and to find a registered dietitian in your area, visit the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics at eatright.org. Encouraging you to eat right your way every day. I'm registered dietitian Vandana Shep. I can remember when I first started, the first time I put on my gym shoes and I said I'm going to work out and this is what I'm going to go for, I remember that moment and I know what now is and I never would have guessed that me getting up off the couch and me saying this is what I'm going to do for myself would inspire so many people, that so many people would be watching and I would even write a book from it. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Hudson and my new book is I Got This. I've been the big girl, I've been now the new, the new me, whatever that is, and I get to tell what it's like on both sides and, and talk about my struggles, and I'm sure some will be able to identify with that. One of the main things I wanted to focus on was helping people realize, do what works for you, do what you want for you. I guess I was very surprised in seeing how important image is in the work that I do. It was almost like a culture shock. It wasn't what was important to me. The moment I realized I wanted to get healthy, one, I was pregnant, I was getting ready to have my baby, and I wanted my body back. I'm like, okay, wow, why am I wearing the same clothes that I wore before I was pregnant, while I'm pregnant, and after, like, huh? Also, I wanted to set an example for my son. It literally is life changing, and no one can understand what I mean unless you actually experience it. So many times I've been discouraged before because I'm sitting looking at someone else like, oh, I can't do what they did, uh, but I'm not them, and I'm not trying to be them. What I'm most proud of is the fact that I said, okay, hmm, this is something I want to do, and this is something I want to change, and to be able to do that, and just having that control and that power within myself to be able to do whatever I want to do with me or whatever I want to do with my life. Thanks for reading I Got This. I hope it helps you on your path to finding your new you. Hi, Hi I'm Christy Butler reporting with News ULM and I'm here on location in Oxon Hill, Maryland at the dental offices of Frederick Clark. Now, Dr. Clark, many people are very apprehensive about going to the dentist. What makes your practice a place where people can actually be comfortable? I've been practicing dentistry for almost 30 years in the Washington metropolitan area. And one of the things I took into consideration early on is that people are afraid of the dentist. And I think one of the things that worked in my favor was, was that I did not have the experience of having a bad experience with a dentist in my lifetime. So I came into the dental practice with the idea that I was going to try to put myself in the shoes of the patients where they are, meet them where they are. What we found that there are four uh, for about four basic things, the patients are very uh, concerned about the dentist. They're concerned about pain or the needle. They're concerned about the noise, which is the drills, the suction. They're concerned about the uh, loss of control, being placed in the chair in a supine position. And they're also 
afraid of sometimes the dentists themselves. If we have to use sedation, sometimes we will give patients uh, Valium or something to help them to relax when they come to dental visit. We'll, we'll go through breathing exercises. We'll do a lot of things that help the patients to, to not deal with their fears. We even have uh, soothing music playing in the office. As they say, uh, music calms the savage beast, but uh, music calms dental patients too. Typically, if you look at the progression of diabetes, uh, there are two types, and in general, there is uh, type 1, which is juvenile diabetes, and type 2, which is adult onset. Adult onset diabetes is the more common. In other words, if you were to look at the numbers, you might see in terms of statistics and ratio, 10% of people may have juvenile diabetes, but 90% have adult onset. In which case, you're saying that this is a disease that its uh, appearance in people's lives usually is in the third or fourth decade of life. But periodontal disease is a disease which, to me, is an enigma to most pa most people. 80% of people by age 40 have some degree of periodontal disease. It can be early, moderate, or advanced. Most people are completely unaware of it. I've talked to seniors who are in their 70s who lost all their teeth and never knew that the reason they lost their teeth was periodontal disease. Now, if those people have uh, diabetes and periodontal disease, sometimes we see those people may lose their teeth in their 30s and their 40s as opposed to at 60 or 70. Hola, me llamo Yolania Costa y tengo diabetes y miro mi peso y una manzana al día mantiene tu diabetes lejos. Así que la próxima vez escoge una manzana y no una hamburguesa. A Dramatic Health Production I'm Claudia. I live in Sacramento, California, and I'm making my living as an artist. As a single mother, I did work hard raising my daughter, but I'm very, very proud of the way that she came out. My mom is very expressive, very creative. She laughs a lot. This is like a month after your first birthday. Oh, wow. Yes, my sweet baby. <laughs> Growing up with my mom, we were always surrounded by artists, poets, very interesting people were our community. I was a medical assistant for about 22 years, and I really felt that I was doing something valuable. But I had a heart attack in 2007, and by 2008, it just got too hard to work because I was having such severe bouts of angina. When I was first released from the hospital, I could not do my laundry, and carrying my laundry downstairs would pretty much send me back to the hospital. The doctors regarded that as chronic angina. Maybe a week or two later, I got a call referring me for an appointment to Dr. Schaefer. I met Claudia in 2007 following her heart attack, and I was following her, had her on medical therapy. We had her angina under reasonably good control, but then her angina got worse, and I kept increasing her medications, it didn't seem to do much good, and so I referred her for cardiac catheterization in 2009. And that cardiac catheterization, or angiogram, took a picture of her coronary arteries. It showed that there was some re-narrowing of the stent that was placed at the time of her heart attack, and also showed that she had some moderate disease in some of the smaller blood vessels. So uh, we knew that there was a reason why she was getting angina more easily, the problem was that there was nothing mechanical that could be done. There were no lesions, no narrowings that could take a stent. The typical angina symptom is this pressure on the chest, the squeezing sensation, the elephant on your chest. A minority, but a substantial minority of patients get very atypical symptoms. They'll get only jaw pain, for example, like Claudia does. So when you get the angina, that's the first symptom that you get is? Usually I get it in my jaw. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Every patient has a different story. Every patient has different angina. So it's very important for patients to be very truthful and open about their symptoms. We rely on the patient's description of their symptoms to decide on further tests or further treatment. Dr. Schaefer has worked with me very well to manage my angina by managing my medications, but he also advised that I continue with exercise and diet regimen. 
Weight gain is the sum of little things that add up over time. Choosing the escalator instead of the stairs, eating two helpings of dinner, and so on and so on. Ever wonder why you're winded? Or your joints ache and blame it on your age? Well, think about your weight. Imagine carrying a 10-pound bag everywhere you go. Just 10 pounds adds more than 30 pounds of force to your knees. So those achy knees might mean you need better habits. By realizing you're overweight, and by taking control now, you may lower the risk of developing serious health problems like heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, gallstones, and some cancers. Losing just 5% of your body weight may also decrease the stress you're putting on your body. That means doing more of the things you enjoy without the aches and pains. It's the little things that make up the weight gain. And it's the little things that will help take it back off. Wouldn't you like to drop the weight and stop picking up more? Obesity happens one pound at a time. So does preventing it. This could be the first generation of children in the United States that lives less than its parents. I got two pills I take for my diabetes, then I got one for cholesterol, high blood pressure, and then I take Bieta, which is an injectable. I'm getting really shaky, and I'm sick, and I'm fatigued, and that's when they diagnosed me with hypertension and diabetes. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure cost this country more than $120 billion each year. People are saying, you're crazy. You're a cancer patient. You should be resting. Doctors told me this. When I had the second heart attack, the doctor said, I should prepare for death. Heart disease is an absolutely toothless paper tiger that need never, ever exist. People who were raised in Japan, the Philippines, Korea, China, never had heart disease, prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. This is the atlas of cancer mortality in China. Virtually the Western diet was non-existent. They had no animal products, they had no dairy, no meat. We learned that we could turn on and turn off cancer growth just by adjusting the level of intake of that protein. I knew at that point what caused most diseases. Our national authorities are simply excluding this concept in order to protect the status quo. With the Western diet, there are gonna be half a million people in this country this year who will have to have the front half of their body divided, their heart exposed. Some people would call that extreme. I know of nothing else in medicine that can come close to what a plant-based diet could do. If you go through life thinking that what happens to you from a health perspective is based on your genes, you're a helpless victim. I reversed the diabetes. The diabetes is not coming back. I just can't understand what it's done to change my life. Diet is so much more important than anybody ever thought. To me, the answer is so simple, it's criminal. And it's just people starting to take responsibility for their health and starting to eat more plant-based foods. It's that simple. It's over 400 calories in one serving. How'd you know that? Read the label. Read the label. Read the label. The label. Check the number of servings and serving size. Choose lower fat and lower sodium. Read all about it for Nutrition Fast Label. Read the label. Between 1760 and the end of the Civil War, there were 101 books written or dictated by people who once were slaves and then escaped to the North. And the only one that, that addresses the experience of a free man or woman in the North who was kidnapped into slavery in the South and then made it back to freedom in the North is Solomon Northup. Like many people, I hadn't heard of Solomon Northup, but one time in the 1990s, I went to the old Fort House Museum in Fort Edward, New York. And on the guided tour, they mentioned that Salman Northup and his wife had lived there in the 19th century, and that he had been kidnapped and become a slave, and then wrote a book afterwards. I've had a difficult time these past several years. It was originally published in 1853, before the Civil War, of course, 
And it's very interesting because his attention to detail in the book shows just how curious he was and what an intelligent person he was because he records every little detail that happened to him. No man writing in upstate New York could have fabricated this narrative. There is no justice in this slavery. If justice had been done, I never would have been here. When I had the book in my hand, I opened the page of the book, I couldn't put it down. It's an astonishing story of one man who holds on to his faith, holds on to his humanity through the worst kind of experience one can think of, and it was something which I thought the world should know about. It was such an amazing discovery for me. Many people don't even realize that there were free Negroes at the time, but of course there were. And Solomon and his wife were part of that free black community. And Solomon's father, Mintus, was born a slave who earned his freedom and then accumulated enough land to get citizenship rights, the right to vote in the state of New York. So Solomon was born free. He was never a slave until he was kidnapped. I was a free man. I'm not a slave. After 1808, the importation of slaves from Africa into the United States had been banned by the federal government. That meant that the supply of slave labor was limited, and therefore, places in the South that were just developing, that desperately needed labor, were willing to pay very high prices for slaves. And consequently, people with criminal minds would realize that if they could kidnap a free black person and get them into the South, they could make a lot of money. You're no free man. You're nothing but a Georgia runaway. Every free Negro in the United States knew that they had to carry their free papers. You have no right whatsoever to detain me. Resolve this. Produce your papers. Imagine that state of being. Days ago, I was with my family and my home. Now you tell me all is lost. Despite all the terrible things he experienced and that he saw, he's able to maintain his identity over all those years and to remember that somehow he is going to get home. 12 Years a Slave is the greatest realistic depiction of slavery. It's brilliantly rendered. It makes you feel it, breathe it, smell it, experience it, suffer under the weight of the burden of the vulnerabilities of slavery in a way that's not pornographic. And that's the strength of the film. You know, there's so many levels to this book and to the story and for me Solomon's book is a gift. It is a gift from the middle of the 19th century right into the present day. It's a story that speaks to these ongoing debates as we grapple with what it means, what human dignity and human respect really really mean and how do we apply that on any given day. It would be an unspeakable happiness to see my wife and my family again. You can really eat that? I thought you were diabetic. Yeah, but I just got these pills. They're supposed to work like insulin. Found them on the internet. Sounds too good to be true. I can eat whatever I want. Look, it says so right there on the bottle. Mm, that's not good. Ever get the feeling you've been had? How can you spot health fraud? Look for bold product claims, personal testimonials, and a host of promises. There are many other red flags, and we'll tell you all you need to know. We're the FDA. Don't be a victim of health fraud scams. Be smart, be aware, be careful. For more information on how to spot health fraud scams, visit fda.gov slash health fraud. First of all, I want to thank you for raising the awareness of diabetes screening and, and testing. Well, diabetes is one of a several chronic illnesses uh, that can be prevented. And when you're raising awareness and outreach and people are getting screened for diabetes, the treatment that we can provide on the front end, it's less costly, not only financially, but to the quality of your life. We can improve your quality of life and ensure that you're making the right choices for eating and you're getting the right treatment up front. If you delay and you don't get screened or tested and you do have diabetes, it can be much more costly for you and your family, both in terms of your health and your wallet. So we're encouraging everybody to get screened.
and there are, there are signs uh, that, that you um, have diabetes or may have diabetes, then we can get you to the right treatment early on. It is something that is very important in the African American community because the, the, the health disparities in, in the area of diabetes is tremendous. So again, I appreciate the focus, educating, outreach, the screening, the testing on diabetes, particularly in the African American community. I'm Dr. Carlisa Hussein, Director of the Office of Minority Health and Health Disparities in Maryland's Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. I'm here today presenting on power and politics, and it's very important when it comes to diseases like diabetes. Our office has been preaching about diabetes for years. It's highly found in African Americans in Maryland and in Baltimore City, and the death rates are high. The loss of limbs are high. So we're trying to get the message around, so this is exciting. Test a million is a way to go about it. So I'm very happy to see you here today doing this, and we want to get the word out around our state to all of the two million minorities in Maryland. San Antonio, Texas was the backdrop for our recent testing of Honda's new 2014 Accord Hybrid. On the outside, this Ohio-made hybrid shares most of its architecture with the tried and true gas model. The big differences being underneath. This Accord uses a hybrid dedicated 2-liter double overhead cam IVTEC engine paired with a two-motor system for a combined peak output of 196 horsepower. The hybrid drivetrain is so refined that when you're switching between modes, it's virtually undetectable. Aside from some low, unique noises uh, at low speeds. This green-minded setup is good for a wallet-friendly 50 city, 45 highway, and 47 combined. I like to drive more on the sporty side of casual. Um, I like to get to my speed quickly, and on the highway, I prefer to be in the quicker pace of things. Uh, that being said, I still average about 46 miles to the gallon. Be sure to stay tuned to Motor Week for a full road test coming soon. Hi, I'm Martin Saylor. I'm corporate chef of Coastal Sunbelt Produce, and we are supporting the Maryland Agriculture Picnic with Arnold Farms, which is a wonderful farmer out of uh, Chestertown, and we have Princess Anne crab meat, and we supply fresh vegetables to a la carte restaurants and hotels and country clubs and retailers, and we're thrilled to be here to serve Maryland people Maryland food. This is a very important uh, occasion here where we're showcasing the natural fruits, vegetables, produce, dairy of Maryland. One thing the governor pointed out which is very important is to be able to eat local fresh foods. A lot of our foods are sent from different countries, from across the country, and we don't know how fresh and how potent the vegetables and fruits that we are getting in the grocery store. So I encourage everyone, if you're looking to eat healthy, uh, if you're looking to um, cure your diabetes, I encourage you to eat your local fresh produce, even the meats and the dairy. If it's fresh, it doesn't have to be treated for long shelf lives. So whatever area you are in, you can find this kind of um, produce and, and uh, dairy and meats in your local farmer's market. And I encourage you to go and do so.